So hello everyone, uh, I want to welcome Tomar Sharon for this edition of UX on Coffee. Before uh, we start, Tomar, I want to introduce myself. My name is Avi and I'm the founder of UX Salon, which is a group dedicated to advance the, the, the profession of user experience design and the profession and learning of user experience design. And we also organize a conference uh, on next April in Tel Aviv, uh, which I'm really excited about. Uh, so if you want to know more about uh, UX Salon, go to uxsalon.com. So, Again, uh, this is uh, UX on Coffee with Tomer Sharon, uh, head of UX at WeWork, and former senior user experience <laughs> researcher at Google. Um, mm -hmm. Also the author of um, uh, It's Our Research, and, current, and recently uh, the author of Validating Product Ideas. And this is the reason I wanted to talk to you. Tomer, this is UX on Coffee, which means you have, uh, you have your coffee you it handy. I do have my coffee. Oh, show me, show me that. What is that? That's a, that's, that's a really cool mug. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, uh, kind so of a jar for. It looks like a jar for jam, but it's I use it for coffee. That's uh, pretty. That's very cool. Um, what we're doing is that we're having a coffee casual conversation, and once the coffee is over, we're going to end the conversation. Uh, that's the format. So, cheers! Thanks for having coffee. With cheers. Me. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you a little bit more about how you, how you started working on your recent book and why uh, you wrote it. Uh, excellent question. Uh, there's a there's a nice story behind it. So uh, as I was finishing my first book, I swore that I will never do it again. That I will never write another book in my life um, because it's probably the hardest job I ever did, and uh, it. it it caused me physical pain to, to complete. And, um, but then <laughs> I became, I didn't think about a book. I became curious about, I started uh, some work with uh, startups uh, in and outside of, of Google and um, to mentor startups on, on research. And um, I became curious about how they um, make decisions about their products, how they, um, how they create different things based on user input, if at all. So I started, I built a, a, a script for an interview, and then I started uh, reaching out to as many startup founders and later on uh, product managers in enterprises. And I eventually interviewed 200 people from all over the world. And um, I asked them, uh, I asked them a few questions, uh, mainly about the questions that they ask themselves um, about users or potential users at any point in the process of, of creating a new product, feature, or service. And um, I didn't even think about a book. Um, and then I found two things. I found one that, um, th and that surprised me, that they asked themselves really good questions. Uh, and they also have a good uh, understanding of the priority of which questions are more important to answer than others. Um, I actually created my list, a list of my own, what questions they should ask themselves before I even started. And there was a, there was a very good match. I think about um, seven out of ten top, the ten top questions were a match. Uh, and also the order was a good match. So this is the surprising and positive finding from these uh, these series of uh, this series of interviews that they ask the right questions and they know which questions are more important than, than others. The sad finding, and um, and that was the one that, that caused me to um, to write another book. And this is my last <laughs> book ever. Never say never. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's that's for another interview. Um, <laughs> And um, so the sad finding was that, um, you know, how they answer those questions. So after I was, you know, really surprised to hear from almost all of them that they asked the right questions, I asked them, so how, how did you answer those, those questions? And um, it's, I, I don't know what to call it, sad, embarrassing, biased, um, nothing, nothing, almost nothing that I heard related to any type of, uh, research with users or or anything with users at all. Uh, so for example, how do you know, um, so they said uh, one of the questions we asked ourselves is what do people need or do they need our product? And which is a, an excellent question. 
Um, and the way they answer, uh, for example, was uh, they didn't even understand why I'm asking. Um, what, do you, what do you mean, how we answer the question? We developed a product, of course they need it. Or, um, or people who were you know, you know, into lean startups, so they heard that it's important to talk with users. So uh, what I usually heard was, here is they pitched a product to uh, potential customers in their minds. This was their family and friends. And uh, they pitched a product, they described the product. If they didn't develop it yet, if they did, they showed some mocks or, or prototypes or whatever. And then they asked people the three questions that, uh, that are very bad to ask. Uh, would you use it? Would you pay for it? How much you pay for it? And that's how they uh, realized that people needed it. So, um, so understanding that there's a need for uh, this content on how to answer this question, I also understood that there's not a strong want for the content because they think they're answering the questions in a good way, um, I decided to write a book um, and also provide um, video um, content on that and also continue mentoring in person. But the book was kind of a way to um, have a solid foundation of content that didn't exist earlier for people who are not researchers. People who are not doing research, maybe never did research with users, uh, but do have questions that can benefit from uh, such research. So this is the reason. So this is a, a user research book. This is a, you know, you call it a lean user research. Yes, I call it uh, validating product ideas. We had about 48 ideas for the how to call the book, but this, uh, <laughs> but this eventually uh, was the one, validating product ideas uh, through lean user research. And, um, Lean user research, um, in my mind, is um, different than regular uh, user research. Um, first of all, because it's it's done by non-researchers, so and and that that matters because a researcher, if they want to apply, let's say, a research method that they're not familiar with, they would probably buy um, or read at least. Uh, I don't know, two books that I can think of, uh, Understanding Your Users and Observing the User Experience, excellent books with excellent material and content for researchers, and that's perfect for us. I use these books all the time and other books, but these are advanced books for people uh, who know what they're doing. Um, I addressed my book to people who have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> they just know that... Um, you know, people say that we should talk to our customers, but they don't really know how to do that. But they really want to do that. So to me, that's one aspect of um, of Lean. They want their answers uh, to to arrive to them very quickly uh, and effectively, and they want to do the research on their own. They don't want to hire anyone um, because in in many cases they don't have the budget for it. Uh, they don't have time for all of this. And, um, and another aspect of, of lean user research is that it's not perfect. Um, sometimes it's quick and dirty. You're going to get uh, an answer. It's probably going to be 80% of the true answer, but it's better than 0%. So, um, so there are some corners to be cut, and uh, I try to, um, to guide uh, my readers through that mainly through um, what I call indirect research techniques. So researchers are very aware, most of them at least, of their body language when they interact with users. So I know, for example, that if I um, you know, stand over the shoulder of someone when, they, when, they, when I ask them to use something, that makes them nervous, maybe change their behavior. Um, a product manager or a startup founder would not know that, would not pay attention to that. They might be aware of that, but not do anything about it. So um, what I try to do in the book is uh, suggest methods that are indirect, for example, remote research and things like that, so people will not have, um, will not need a lot of, you know, excellent moderation skills. But generally speaking, the book is written 
based on the questions that people told me in those interviews, 200 interviews, told me that they have. Um, so I have, I think I collected about, I don't know, four, 400 questions from people. And again, with about uh, 50 of them did more research, a card sorting exercise, and we organized, they organized all of these 400 questions into eight groups. And I summarized each group into um, one question. Mm -hmm. And each question became a chapter in the book. And, um, and, and the chapter pretty much is a step-by-step how-to guide on, on how to answer the question with one, two, or three uh, research techniques. And um, although, uh, so the book is not out yet. It's going to be out very soon. But, uh, of course, the millions who are going to watch this video uh, will, have, will have the opportunity to buy the book. So I printed out the cover. So let's oh. pretend as if, as if we have the book. Um, the Rosenfeld, media, the Rosenfeld um, design. Yes, yes, it's a it's a new Rosenfeld design actually. It's a, this is the first in a series of a few um, a few new designs. Show it again because so. it was a half cut. <laughs> yeah, guide me. More up, 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 up. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah. So it's just paper with that. So um, the very book, soon. The book is for entrepreneurs. Is it for user experience designers? Who who can you really take advantage of this? When I wrote the book, I wrote the book thinking about product managers and startup founders. Um, I know designers and researchers would also be interested. So let's say they are a secondary audience for for the book. But the primary audience is product managers and um, startup founders. And um, a another aspect of it is that I decided that the book is going to be jargon-free. So there's not going to be any word in the book that only researchers or designers understand. Uh, so for example, um, we like to use these things. Uh, contextual inquiry is not there. <laughs> mm. there's, there. There are no such words. Only words that people understand uh, plain language, and the book was was scanned to remove such language if I, you know, happen to be using it without without uh, an intention to do that. Uh, you know, um, validating product ideas reminds me of uh, what they call uh, design driven innovation. Is it simple? Okay. Do you know, do you know what I'm talking about here? Uh, because uh, I, no. Is it, is it is it is it is it? Can I read your book and? find new products or is it for me to validate only what I have set um, in my mind? Um, the answer is both. So the book is, I, I would say there are three main um, uh, types of questions that the book is, is, is helping you answer. One is understanding the need. So uh, what do people need? Who are the users? Uh, how do people currently solve a problem? And what is the user's workflow? These are the four questions or four chapters uh, that help understand the need. Um, so it's not necessarily, you know, understanding whether people need your idea. Uh, it's also for gathering or exploring new ideas. Um, but we, we both know and we all know that it almost never happens that people don't have an idea and then they go and do research and then and then find an idea. It happens maybe, I don't know, once in a million times, but normally what you see is that people have ideas and they want to see if, if this is a good idea or not. Um, and the second part is about, uh, or this, the, the, I actually have only had one chapter about finding out about you know, the want. Do people want the product? Want and need is, is completely different. And the third types of, uh, type of questions are the, um, evaluating the design. So once you have something, whatever that, that thing is, um, you want to know if people can actually use it. You want to know uh, if you have some options. You want to know which option is, is better. And, um, and another question that I saw that people ask themselves is how do people find uh, stuff, I call it, <laughs> in, in the product? And the last chapter is, uh, is a unique chapter because this is a question that people always ask me and decided to write a chapter in the book. So they stop asking me that. Uh, how, do, how do you find uh, 
participants for research. Is so, there still a problem in this business? Oh, oh, you, you, have, you have no idea. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I won't ask you, but I have another question that I want to ask you. I want to ask you because I read in the frequently asked questions in, in the Rosenfeld uh, website, mm -hmm. you mentioned chapter three as a special one. Uh, how do people currently solve problems? Uh, yes. So I'm um, wondering if you can give me what, what is that to you, this chapter? I think the FAQ, let me, let me uh, see. The, FA, the question was, uh, I, I don't have time to read a book. Give me one chapter that I should read. Uh, and this is, by the way, something that I heard during those, those interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, some people, um, I didn't say anything about a book because at the time I didn't even think about a book, but they thought I'm interviewing them because I want to write a book. So some of them said, if you're planning to write a book, don't. I don't have time to read a book. Uh, you know, if I have you know f three hours without anything to do, I would work on my code. I'm not going to read a book. Um, so I I, uh, I added this question, and the answer is: uh, if you only have you know time to read one chapter, um, read chapter three, um, which is about uh, how about the answer to the question: How do people currently solve a problem? And this is kind of a unique chapter because it's a chapter that calls for a direct uh, direct technique. So, and the technique described there is observation uh, that has many names, but um, again, no jargon. So observation when you go to people's uh, natural environment and observe what they do to see how they currently solve problems. Um, I think this is um, one of the most important research techniques because it can teach you so much about so many things um, and this is why and I, I, I go uh, in the chapter I go over a lot of you know, small techniques for you know for example you can just stand there and watch, you know, what people do, but you have to really know what to pay attention to. So I give a list of, I don't know, I can't remember, uh, 10 different things to pay attention to. So you make sure that you learn the things that you need to learn. Um, but my general recommendation, if you only have time to read one chapter, and it's also in the answer to that uh, FAQ, is that um, I recommend people scan the table of contents and then try and identify a question that they currently have and then read the chapter that deals with, with this question. Uh, but if you have no idea or no questions, just read chapter three. So this book is really, uh, like you said, in, in, in that, uh, that it's not about reading the whole book cover to cover. No. It's about finding out what question you need to solve at that specific point, which makes it a very useful, uh, I guess, book for, for many people. And it's a, it's a great I, ho I hope so. I hope so. I think I, I wrote there that this is a, a doing book, not, not a reading book. Mm -hmm. um, it's, <laughs> I, I can, I wrote it and I can even write it, uh, read it cover to cover. Um, it's, 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 not, it's not for you to read because it's really divided into organized by steps. So step one, do this. Step two, there's no point in you reading step two without completing step one. So that's why you need to have the question and then, um, and then just you know, walk through the steps and actually do it, not, not just read about them. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, we're almost running out of, I'm almost <laughs> running out of coffee. So uh, I'm slow. Uh, so maybe as last question or as a last kind of thing I wanted to talk to you about, you now moved uh, from Google uh, to WeWork. Mm -hmm. And can you tell me a little bit more what you're doing these days? And I know you're you're actually hiring there, right? This, yeah. Right? So, give me some give me some clues of who 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 could be a good fit to WeWork and what do you do there? First of all, I spent um, seven years at Google. Um, I was very happy. Um, I wasn't looking for a job, and um, and suddenly I got a phone call um, from a, a, a friend, a mutual friend who who happened to know uh, WeWork CEO. And um, long story short, here I am <laughs> working as, as head of UX for, uh, for WeWork. We're trying to do something uh, very special there. Um, WeWork is very well known for its beautiful uh, space design. If you go to your favorite search engine uh, to an image search and type WeWork, you'll be delighted by, by what you see in the results. Uh, WeWork knows its stuff. Um, when it comes to space design. Um, that said, there's a big opportunity to create a better, a more holistic experience for our members 
um, if we combine that space design with digital products that WeWork develops for its members and uh, service design. So for example, when you book a meeting room, a conference room through a system, that, a digital system that we provide you with through a website or an app, um, you might have some expectations and then when you walk into that room, those expectations might be different. So we want, when, when I say holistic, we want to connect and integrate the two into one experience. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of service design uh, that should happen at WeWork. Uh, so, for example, the tour that you're getting when you're considering uh, becoming a WeWork member or your first day experience and other things. So, um, I'm hiring, a, I'm, I'm actually starting a new uh, UX practice there. And, um, and we're going to be a group of about 30 to 40 people. Um, and, uh, and I'm organizing the teams based on user journeys. So I identified several uh, user journeys for a WeWork member, and each design team is going to be responsible and the WeWork expert for that user journey. Wow. And they have a mandate, our group has a mandate to work with any department at WeWork that is related to those uh, user journeys to make sure that we do have um, a more holistic experience. So, I mean, I don't think we have enough time to describe everything that I'm looking for, every, every role, but um, anything that you can imagine that relates to user experience is probably on our list. So, if you are um, in New York or want to be in New York, um, please apply. Um, the best way to do that is through um, my Medium channel. I'm posting all of the positions there. Um, so it's, uh, I think, medium.com slash uh, at t -Sharon. At t -Sharon. Now, yeah. uh, this is so, just to, to reiterate, this is about, like, you're looking for anything about service design, because service design is becoming the, the thing now, and uh, it's not just the digital aspect of... No, not at all. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm looking for, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want the list, I can give it to you, but I'm looking for anything you can imagine that has... Uh, design or UX uh, in front of it or after it. Well, I, know, I know that you're listing it all on Medium, so people can yeah. go there. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, Tomer, uh, we will end here. here. Okay. Uh, again, thanks for having coffee with me. Um, um, it was a pleasure again to see you. Hopefully, I'll see you again Same soon. Same here. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you.